going to start a series called Harvest Time. And I believe it will be changing, it will be revolutionizing your life. In the past six months, God has been speaking and dealing with me on this subject and has revealed in a greater depth than probably, I've been serving the Lord since 1974, and, and greater depth than have ever happened since that time. It's about sowing and reaping, about harvest time. God wants us to know that, I, you know, I, it's not that I didn't know it. But I am, I've come to a place in my walk, and you know, you have seasonal things and growth areas that you kind of just come into, and I'm praying that that'll be this day for you as well. I, I know what it means to be a giver or a tither and a believer, and, and God has blessed us so much. And you might think that this message is just about your finances, but you are so wrong. You are so missing it if that's your attitude because you have been mistaught. Let me just tell you something. The church has been mistaught has had more religious training than they had New Testament theology and understanding. And because of that, they've been held back. They've been taught that it's not good to talk about this subject. Did you know that Jesus talked about how to sow and reap more than any other su subject in the Bible? God wants you to understand this principle because this is how God wants us to do. And as I meditated upon this, I asked, Lord, what does this mean? And a word came to me and it said this, for those who do this, this is a year then of increase for those who learn how to do this. And this is a, a year of increase and in harvest for the church, for you, and everything you do. How many want that harvest to come into their life? Only a few of you? Only a few of you really want what God has and the, the abundance of God and the things of God? I'll tell you what, there's more than enough. God, if you look out into the cosmos, that's all God's. The earth and everything belongs to God. It, he's bigger than what your little mind and my little mind can comprehend. And so God wants you to understand there's more for you. This is the year of harvest for New Covenant and for the church in general. We're in a time of famine as far as the, the America is concerned. I'm telling you, at the end of this service, we're going to have a time of prayer because we need to pray for our country. Amen. We need to understand what we're doing here. This is war. This is a spiritual battle we're facing, and we need to learn how to use the principles of God so that we can apply the principles of God and reap the harvest that God has for us. I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about souls. How many want to see many souls come to Christ? A harvest of souls by the thousands and hundreds of thousands. We need to see America come back to God. We don't want the 20% or the 10%. We want to see it go back to where you are one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Mm -mm -mm. Don't get me started here. So we need to look at what to do. Sign it. Sowing is more than finances. It's giving out in every way able that you can reap a harvest from God. Any way of giving. Hallelujah. So as we look today, we're going to look at the principle of sowing and reaping in harvest time. First of all, in your outline there, if you can look at it, seed time and harvest is the, uh, the law of Genesis. That's what it is. The first chapter of the book of Genesis talks about this law called the law of Genesis. Sounds kind of cool. Sounds kind of neat. Sounds kind of deep. It is. It's a principle of God. Understand this, that God wants you to know this is how all the kingdom of God works. Not just some of it. All of it. Every aspect of it. From salvation to any aspect that you can aptly think of. This is the law of how God decided how things work on planet Earth. How many live on planet Earth here? We can tell some aliens have come in. Say amen. <laughs> They look kind of funny too. Say amen. Hallelujah. Now this is the way God does things. It's called the law of seed time and harvest. And from the beginning, God made this so. If you look in your outlines, you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. And here the word says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 12 says, And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, like kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, 
And God saw that it was good. See, what, what you sow is what you're going to get, in other words. God made this principle here that the seed right now, the seed has within itself seed itself. A little time afterwards, after the great flood, how many believe in the great flood? There was a great flood, a, a world before this world. A world before the world as we know it. It was an evil world, as is it today. Man is innately evil without Christ. And so we look at this time, and at, at this time right after the flood, God visits, visits Noah and talks to Noah after the flood and after recited in Genesis chapter 8. You'll find it again in your outline there as you look at it, verses 20 and through 22. And it says in verse 20, And Noah offered burnt offerings, 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 on the altar. Verse 21, And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination or the thinking or the thoughts of man's heart is evil from his youth. That's the way we are. I don't know how God can put up with us without Christ. Thank God for Christ. Say amen for that. It says, neither will I again destroy every living creature as I have done. How many know that God has a part of him called the wrath of God? We don't talk about that much, but it's ready to be poured out again. Let me just tell you, verse 22 then says, while the earth, here's the principle. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, Summer and winter and the day and night shall not cease. This principle is, is from now on. This is a thing that happens all the time. Now, this is the way God has chosen to do all the things that you and I learn how to operate in. And the things and the principles of God, this is how God activates it. And this is how God works it. And it will last this way as long as this planet is in existence. And it will be a long time. Let me just tell you something. This earth is a, a old thing. Say amen. amen. But it has many more years and it will last this way as long as this. There will be a new earth one day. Say amen. amen. How many are looking forward to that day? Amen. A new heaven and a new earth. Thank God we're going home soon. I said we're going home soon. I said we're going home soon. Amen. Thank God we're going to go home soon. I can't wait to go home. But while we're here, we need to understand how God's method of sowing and reaping work. This is a fixed law. It's like gravity. You can't avoid gravity. I mean, everybody here is tied down because of the gravitational pull of the earth. It is a law. It can't be violated in the sense that it won't work. You can oversee it and supersede it by way of God's law and principles, but it works. And this is the same thing. This is a fixed law. Seed time harvest. That's the way it works. That's the way it's always going to work, whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, whether you understand it or not. It's working in your life right now. How many believe that? Hallelujah. Everything produces after its kind, and the seed is in itself. See, what you have to sow can reproduce itself. If I give a, a, cup, a, a bottle of water, that means that... God looks at that, and water comes back. If I had an apple, the seed is within it. You cut it open into the core. You can look it open, and you can take seed out and plant more trees, apple trees. Right. If you plant strife, you'll get strife back. Right. If you plant love, you get love back. What you sow, you know, see, it applies to everything. Right. It not only applies to your finances, which is true, but it applies to everything. God says, what you sow, you're going to reap. Galatians 6, 7. What a man sows, so shall he reap. Whether good or bad, that's, that is one of the most scariest verses in the Bible for me. How many look at that sometimes and say, oh, God, help me, Jesus? Anybody ever say that? I'm goes, you know, when he, thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9, that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God will wash you clean. God won't hold that against you. Even when you do wrong, God can remove the wrong and make it right. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his love. If without, without the love of God, we would all be dead going to hell. But God's love 
Thank God. Would you lift your hands and thank God for the love of God right now? Thank God for the love of God. Thank God I'm not judged for my sin. Thank God you're forgiven. Thank God you're redeemed. Thank God that you're righteous. Thank God you're going to heaven. Thank God your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank God it can't be blotted out. Thank God the devil's defeated. And thank God you're a world overcomer in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Now this is the way the kingdom of God works. It's as if a man would cast seed into the ground. I want you to look at Mark 4 there in your outline. This is what Jesus said about the kingdom. Mark 4, verses 26 through 29. And he said, so, now listen to this. So is the kingdom of God. And that's the way it is. he's saying in like manner, as it is in the natural. So, where do you think he got it from? God is a spirit. Not a spirit, but spirit. From the spirit realm, it works. From the natural realm, it works. From any realm, this is how it works. He said, so he said, is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast ground or seed into the ground. I love this. And should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up or sprout and grow. Now listen to this part. This part, I love this one. He knows not how. He just doesn't know. I remember in all my walk with God, one of the biggest areas after I do what God says is, I don't know what's coming next or how it's going to come. You ever get to that point and you say, now, Lord, how do you do this? What is it that you're going to do? How do you bring that about? How is it going to be? How do you grow the church? How do you grow my bed? How do you do this? How do you make the family right? How do you get this person? I know not how. But then God will reveal it to you as you go on. And we'll learn how God will reveal the harvest to you. The Bible says the harvest cries out. The harvest will cry out to you as to when to put in the sickle. And we'll look at this right now. It says, for the earth brings forth fruit of its herself. And it shows you the stages of growth that God will allow you to understand. We're not going to get into all that today. We're looking at a general overview. And we'll look at it in the next few weeks so you know precisely Aren't you glad you got a good pastor that can give you precise understanding of the Word of God? Thank God. Thank God for the Word of God. I love the Word of God. I think the Word of God is the best thing. It's the best book in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I watched a lot of sci-fi. And if they ever found a book on sci-fi that told all the answers, they would think it was the greatest thing. Let me just tell you something. The Bible is the greatest thing. Say amen. It tells you everything. And it says in verse 29, and it says, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Yeah. I'll teach you later on what your sickle is, what that is, so you can understand how to put the sickle in. The harvest will cry out to you as to when. You don't know how it's going to happen. As you look in this verse, you'll see a lot, three things. Number one, you have to sow. Number two, God brings it to grow. Number three, you got to go harvest it. you got to go get it. Just like many of you right now. God, I'm just sitting around waiting for my harvest to come in. No, no. you got to go up and look for that job. you got to go out and make that living. God will give you opportunities that are calling to you. The harvest is calling. He'll make many ways for you to bring in harvest. And God will just walk you into things that you just, sometimes will just overwhelm you. As you get into this, it says, keep on casting your bread upon the water, for soon it's going to come back on every way. So you keep on doing, and you keep on giving, and you keep on sowing, and you keep on knowing that God is going to bring it back greater than what you thought. Yeah. He'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think according to his, the word and according to the spirit that's in us. Hallelujah. So we need to understand this. Number two, Roman numeral two here. Seed time and harvest is not just about giving money to God's work. Hello. I'm going to show you something that's going to bless you. And it has not been utilized. In most cases, in most churches. I talked to a, a good pastor the other day. I was talking to him about this. He didn't know what in the world I was talking about. 
And he'd been a pastor for a long time. I said, you don't know this. I wasn't trying to be condescending. I was just, and I didn't say that even to him. But I was in awe that he wouldn't know this. You know, the Bible says that we need to study to show ourselves approved the work when that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to know. These things have I written unto you that you may know. You can know it. You don't have to guess it. You can know it with precise knowledge. So actually, sowing seed can be applied to any kind of giving. Any kind. Anywhere, any place. You can give your time. You can give your work. You can give your service. You can give your talent. You can give money. It's all that. You can give. You know what we start teaching here at the church? A lot of times we have people, we have a hard time sometimes feeling the nursery ladies and gentlemen because they look at it as work. I says, no. Don't ever look at it as work again. Don't call it work. Call it sowing. I'm sowing my time. And if you sow your time, how many know that God will reap in, in time? Say amen. You're going to reap. So you're actually planting. Don't look at it as a, as a work, as a drudgery, as a, something negative. Look at it. Man, I have an opportunity again to sow into my life so I can get more of what God has for me. Now, we're not about just getting, but God is a good God. Say amen. amen. Understand my heart here. If you think that, you have thought incorrectly. I'm thinking about how you can be blessed as a child of God. How many have kids right now? Raise your hands. Come on, you all ladies have kids? All you ladies have kids? Amen. Don't you want your kids blessed? How many want their kids blessed more than them? Now, if you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly Father good gift gifts to them who ask? He'll give you the Holy Spirit. He'll give you more... I mean, how much do you think the Holy Spirit is worth in your life? My God, I don't think you could put a price on that one. God is good. So we need to understand here. This is how we need to understand. If you understand that it's any kind of giving and you can give your time, your talent, your, your energy, your, your, your words. Your very words are seeds. If you learn the principles of God, this is how the kingdom works. It's not just your finances, which also is true. It's every aspect of your life. How many believe that? Say amen. Let me see here, a consensus here. Raise your hand if you believe that. If you don't, see me after service and show me from the word that it's not. You know, I'm tired of an age that goes by just experiences. I want, to, I want an age that goes by the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care about your experience. I don't care about what you think. I don't care about what I think. I care about what the Bible says. Amen. Hallelujah. Let that be true. So we need to understand, in the same way you can expect to receive a harvest from God from your giving. Look at Luke. You should know this scripture by heart. Luke 6.38, right there in your outline. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Read it with me. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you give, it will be given to you again. You give a little, you get a little. You give a lot, give a lot. So bountifully, reap bountifully. So sparingly, reap sparingly. But in another script, another translation, it says, give and you will receive. This is a law. This is not just something you're going to do it, whether you like this or not, whether you agree with this or not. Whatever giving you do, you can give negative thoughts. Guess what you're going to get back? Go ahead, do it. How's that been working for you? I don't like that. Well, what do you like? I like the word. Hallelujah. Now, understand the way I'm coming across. It might come across. I know... You don't know how I wrestle with this, on how to properly bring it across to you so you're not misunderstanding. My heart is for you. My heart all week thinks of ways to bring it to you so that you can have it. That's what I want you to have as a father. 
I want, you know, I, I can't get out of that mode sometimes. Anybody like that as fathers, when you talk to your children? You ever just talk to your children and you're talking to them and, and you're always talking to them like dad and, yeah, that might need some time that you need to talk sometimes like a friend thing. But you're always dad or you're always mom. And I want to talk to you as dad and as father and the Lord and, and give you good stuff. This is good for you. This will help you. This will take you where, where you haven't been before. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Yeah. This is a divine law of God. God is a giver. He gave his son. So if you're going to be like God, you need to become also a giver, a sower. God does it all the time. For God so loved the world that he, he gave. He gave. If you love God, if you love people, if you love the church, if you love humanity, you're going to give. You can't help it. It's part of your new divine nature. I, I mean, I remember a time, I know my wife, she's a, she was, was a bigger giver than I was. She was always time. I, mean, I, would go to the, I would go to the restaurant and I would try to put down as less money as I could. Come on now, somebody say amen to that. Only a few. Say amen. Janice would say, no, give 20, give 30. I said, Ooh. <laughs> just give more. You know, finally I came into a revelation of it. Now I said, wow, this is a great opportunity for us. I've been missing out on. I can learn how to give. And I'll tell you right now, it just keeps on coming back. It keeps on coming back more and more and more. Thirdly here. Before I go on, let me explain the difference between the Bible, what the Bible calls tithing and sowing. People miss it big time here. Okay? And again, please understand what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Put your hand towards me and say, I love you, Pastor, anyway. Say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you like to do this? I would. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord. Let me just stop. You realize what honor means? You, you know how many people are, do not know how to respect people anymore? There's no respect. There's very little respect. Honoring God is respecting him enough to do something about it. Honor him. Honor the Lord. Honor. Say, Lord, I love you. If you. You know, how can you say I love you and then don't do the things he says? So it's so important that you honor the Lord with, listen, your wealth and the first fruits and best part. Best. Everybody say it. Best part. That's the tenth. That's your tithe there. Of all your income, and look at this, verse 10, then, I'm going to look, talk about that in a second, your barns will be filled and your vats will overflow with fresh wine. It's talking about abundance here. You see, tithe is not sowing. Again, we said it today, our offering, we are giving our offering. No, 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 no. Your tithe is your 10%. Yeah. And then above that, an offering, it can be anything, Okay? It could be finances. It could be giving. It could be anything above the tithe. So you have to understand here, according to the word, tithing is not sowing. Tithing is honoring God with the first 10% of all your income or increase. Even your time. Saying, Lord, I'm going to give you my time today. I want to tithe my time. I want to tithe my words. I'm going to tithe my everything. I want to tithe, Lord God. It's holy. We sang it today. We sang holy, 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 holy God, holy God. Do you understand what that means? That God is so great that he's separated from everything evil that we call him holy. It says in Leviticus, look at it, verse 20, chapter 27, verse 30, one-tenth or tithe of what comes from the land, whether grain or food, Money, or bicycles, or cars, or houses, or whatever is holy and belongs to the Lord. Okay? 
your, your tithe, it, it belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. Very quiet in this church right now. Because this is one of the most sensitive areas. It's the mo and to some, it's the most unsacred thing. We should never talk about it. How dare you say that about God's word? Now, I'm tired of, I'm not here to play games. I'm not here to, to, to stroke you a, a nice way. I'm here to give you the word of God. We have to come to a time that we need to grow up. We live in a, in a generation of existentialism where experience is supreme. Let me just tell you what's supreme. God is supreme. Amen. The word of God is supreme. Amen. And if the word offends us, something's not wrong with the word. Something is wrong with us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we look at this, and see, you have to understand. Are you ready with what I'm about to say? I'm not trying to be mean. So look, I'm really having a hard time saying all this, too. I really am, because I can feel the tension of some people because you have maybe come to this place. I'm not trying. I'm stretching you a little bit. And let me just tell you, I, no one's forced to do anything. You can do whatever you want. A person doesn't even have to accept Christ. You're going to have to want to. You're going to have to want to. Here it is. Are you ready for this? Listen, you can't reap a harvest if you don't tithe. I want you to go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10. Look at that word. That one word. You see it underlined? Then. You know what that means? After that, what you have just done in verse 9 is done then. Then, after you have tithed, then your barns will be full. No wonder people are having a problem with this. They're not doing what they said, the word of God said. Because the Bible even says, it's not me. Take it up with the author here. He says, then, if you do verse 9, if you do tithe, then I'm going to promise that your, your barn will be full. It's going to be so much that you will not be able to contain it. Your barn will be full as a result of something else, too. It's not your tithe. <laughs> It's going to be your offering. It's going to be your sowing. If I had 100 acres of land as a farmer and I was only farming about 30 acres and that's all I did every year, that keeps me where I am. But if I want to go a little farther, I'll add another five and I will have increase. That is my offering. And I'll explain that because it's so important that you understand what God's doing. Your barns will be filled as a result of your sowing. Not your tithing, your sowing. And it's so important that we understand this. The Bible teaches us, now listen, you've heard this all your life here in the South. Thank God for living in the South. Say amen, say amen. And you know how blessed you are to have all this knowledge given to you all your life? Look at Malachi chapter 3. You've probably heard this one. Let me just say this. The tithe belongs to the storehouse. To the church. Why? To support the work of God. And to do ministry. You know what it also does? It protects your future harvest. It protects your future harvest. Well, I, you know, well, I didn't get anything. Well, you didn't, you, this is, look what it's saying. Look at verse 10 of Malachi 3. Verse 8, though, is not there, but it also says, in tithes and offerings. He's talking about the subject of tithing and offering. In verse 10, he says, bring all your tithe into the storehouse, into the church, so that there'll be food in my house. In other words, there'll be a provision supplied for the ministry. And prove me in this way. So, now, listen to what God says. Prove him, test him. I have had many people do this, and they come out astounded at how God blesses them. Prove me in this way, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open up. You want this happen right here? Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you are not room enough to receive it. We're at that level in our, in our church. I mean, I'll tell you, our food ministry, we have, to, we have to truck it out because there's so much trucked in. That sounds like a neat message. Truck it out because we're trucking it in. 
Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that you, the destroyer of the fruit of your, so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will a wine or the vine drop its fruit in the field before the time, says the Lord of hosts. Now tithing is the key that keeps your seed safe. Amen. How many want their harvest in their kingdom? Amen. Raise your hand. I look like I think I'm putting some of you to sleep. I can walk back here. Hallelujah. Did you know I can walk back here? Look it. Do you want this stuff? How many want it? I'll stop right now if you don't want me to. And it'll be hid. And you'll stay where you are in that. But if you want to go to the next level, for the next several weeks, you're going to have to listen. Hallelujah. And he says that there'll be, all this will come. The key here, it'll keep you safe. God said he would open up the floodgates of heaven. There'll be spiritual rain come down on your, on your harvest. Spiritual rain that'll come back on your seed. God says those who are tithers and sowers, these are the people that honor me. That's what he said. Honor me with that first fruits. Honor me with your offerings. Honor me as your God. If I am your God, I want you to understand how to do this. Honor me in that way. God says it. Let me just tell you something in simplest terms, the difference between sowing seed and tithing. Real simple. In a way, it's like asking, tithing is say, saying this, what would be the right thing to do in the eyes of the Lord? God has blessed me this week. I got this paycheck or this paycheck this month. Or God has blessed me with these things that God has given me. What would be the best thing to do? What is the appropriate thing? It's saying, God, here's what it is. God, I love you. I thank you for blessing me this way. And I want to lovingly obey you by giving back 10% of all that you've increased me with. I'm going to bless you, Lord. I'm going to tr trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust you. Hallelujah. You know, here's a good way to remember it. After you get it, you tithe it. Say this. After I get it, I tithe it. Say it again. After I get it, I tithe it. Whatever that is. You know what? I don't care if it's a... I, I, I tithe bikes back. I tithe everything. Clothes back. This past week, thank God to... Weight loss. Thank you, Jesus. I gave away two big bags of clothes that, that I can no longer fit in. Say amen. Hallelujah. And gave it away. I said, Lord, I'm going to give my clothes as an offering to you and to others to be blessed. Did you know God will honor that? Did you know God will respect that? Did you know that seed sown? Did you know because we're tithers and I'm a tither that my seed is now protected from those kind of seeds that come up against us? Those re he said, I'll rebuke the devourer. Those seed-eating, corrupt, destroying seeds. The enemy will try to steal it. The enemy will try to kill it. The enemy will try to stop you. But guess what? God will come through. Say amen. I said amen to that. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. So that, that tithe is saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have given me. Thank you. But seed sowing is for something future. When you go out to eat today, how many are going to go out to eat today? Let me see your hands. How many are going to eat today at all? You know what you do before you eat? You bow your heads. And you say, thank you for what I'm about to receive. And then it's right there already in front of you. Did you know all the blessings of God are already? And did you know as you offer up offering and say, Lord, I am now expecting, and what you're saying is this, God, I thank you, and I'm believing for this thing to happen in my life. I thank you according to your word, and Lord, Father, I am expecting this to happen because I am giving this as a love to you. I thank you in advance for what I'm about to receive. So tithing is for that past, and the offering is for the future. Did you hear that? 
And so as you understand that principle, that tithe is for the past, for what you have received, and that offering for something that you project, you can go forward. I remember when I, when I was started to work in a church early, okay? I didn't get paid much. I don't get paid much now. Thank God for what I have. I'm not complaining. But I remember when I was making the 1000 1200 a month, I would tithe and give offering on what I want to make, wanted to make. Eventually it came because I was sowing seed. Some of you need to understand the principle of how powerful this is. You can have the blessings of God more than where you are. I know where some of you are. Some of you are in lack and want and need. And you're saying, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Matter of fact, it's important that you do because you'll stay where you are if you don't. And you'll never get it. You'll never get it. You'll have to understand. Someone record the quietness of our service right now. <laughs> you see how important this subject is? I don't look at your records, giving. Sometimes I'll hear it, but you know where you are. You know what you can do. Pastor, I can't. No, no, no. How many trust God? Let me see. Come on. You, do you really trust God? How, no, lift it up here. If you really trust God, you're not ashamed. Go like this all over, all over the place. Then you need to test him in this. He told you to do it. He told you to do it. Well, Pastor, I'm afraid. Sure. Every time you step forward in, in something new, it's always going to require a faith step. Yes. Do you hear me? You got saved. Do you remember the time you first got saved? You were kind of scared. You came up to the altar. Everybody will see me. But you got to the place that it didn't matter because you didn't care what anybody else thought because you knew what you needed. I hope to God you come to the same place in this. That you realize, I don't care what anybody else thinks. If nobody else does it, it doesn't matter what that anybody else does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive from God. Yeah. I'm going to do what God says. I'm going to give my tithe. And then I'm going to sow my time, my talent, my clothes, my bikes, my everything, my cars. If God so tells me, let me just tell you something. What you'll sow, you will reap back. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'll never forget. I think I told a story last week about the guy that told about his house. He just got it paid off. And his wife goes, let's give it to somebody. You know, women are crazy sometimes. Sometimes, I'll tell you. <laughs> the, the man of God just said, <laughs> she, he knew it was the Lord, but he couldn't get it then. It, it, it just couldn't catch, okay? So it, he prayed about it for two years. <laughs> How many know men are a little bit slower than women? Say amen. amen. Women are fast. They are really fast. They can do all kinds of things. <laughs> they are. They're just, they can do it. They can think about 25 things in one time. And they're just so gifted. Hallelujah. Pray for us, men. Say amen. Hallelujah. And so finally he came to, they were flying somewhere. I think they were flying, on, going to ministry someplace. All of a sudden, the word that she sown two years ago dropped from his head into his heart. That's the phrase where it says, it dropped into my heart comes from. It just dropped in your heart. It was up here. He knew it. But it wasn't down here yet. And so as it dropped into his heart, he said, Honey, they're on the plane. <laughs> Honey, I just got it. We need to give our house away. Just like you reacted right now. That's excited the hell everybody probably was for some. And so they gave the house away. Nice house, not a cheap house. Several hundred thousand dollar home. Huh. You know, certain levels for people. I don't expect you to do it yet. Okay? 
certain levels. Let me just talk about that, certain levels. You know, you might think, extending yourself to tithe is for you right now. Okay, certain levels, at least tithe. You know what you can do then? Give your time at least. And sow your time. Say, Pastor Christy, I want to work with the nursery. I want to work out front. I want to sow my time. I want to be in the food ministry. I want to hand out some time. I want to give a couple hours a week to the food ministry. I want to sow it. You know, if you learn how to understand this, then God looks at what you're doing, honors you. As you honor God, God starts to honor you. God starts to open up the floodgates of heaven, the windows of heaven. You have sown and given your time. Start there. Stretch yourself. I remember there's one guy in the church, I'm not going to name, name who it is. He was really struggling with this. I said, you know, this is what the Bible says. You have to come. It took him, it, and it, it took him around a year. I hope you're not that slow. Say amen. Hallelujah. It took him a year to get there. And after he started to do it, he said, Pastor, you were right. Well, it's not that I'm right. It's not that I'm right or wrong. It's a matter of what, what God's word says. And it started to work. He started to see blessings coming into his home. And I, I believe that God is going to start doing something. I believe we've been lied to by the enemy that we should never talk about this subject so that the church becomes stagnant and never have anything so we don't go forth and proclaim the gospel. There's a world out there that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ and it's going to take you and I and everything we got to reach it. They're being bombarded right now. Did you know your kids are being bombarded? How dare him speak on this subject. Well, you know what? Your kids are being bombarded with lesbianism, homosexuality, pornography. They're going to be raised, this generation. You're talking about the generation right now that's being raised. I talked to my granddaughter, and she's only in grammar school, and they're all smoking pot, not her. Thank you, Jesus. They all smoke pot. She's been approached several times by lesbians in her class. You don't think it's so? Talk to your kids. You know what it's going to take? You and I getting out of our religious mindset and get into the Bible and what God says and start sowing and reaping so we can do more for our children. We are in a day of evil. And that's how we're going to end this service right here because I'm going to tell you something. The Lord just checked me this past week. I got, I got whipped and spanked by the Lord. I hope he spanks you today. Say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's sometimes you need to get spanked. I said you need to get spanked. You need to get up and understand what God said. Let me just tell you a few things. Our land is, is divided and split right now. Like never before we're seeing a moral decay right before our eyes. And if we as a church don't do what God says in his word and don't receive the abundance, he'll close down the church. He'll close down the church. He'll close down our voice. There's a lot of voices out there. You don't think I'm telling you the truth? Look at your news here today. They're so biased. They're so anti-God, anti-Christian that you and I are a target anymore. I'll tell you right now, aren't you sickened by this past week we're in New York, my almost home state there, that the Cuomo signs into law that a baby, a baby up to the third trimester can be aborted, even then taken out to die. Let me just tell you something. We are living in an evil day. The Bible says gross darkness will come upon the world. And if we can't even do the simplest of this, what's going to happen when it comes knocking at your door? I'm going to preach here for a while because I'm sick and tired of a church that's mealy, miley, little, weepy, little church. We need to get on fire for God. We need to get fired up and know what God says. Not only are we through abortion, let me just tell you, the moral decay. Let me just read a scripture from Judges. It tells us this in Judges chapter, chapter 17, verse 6. It says, every man did what was right in his own eyes. Are we not living in that day? And here you are looking at me, talking about tithing, thinking, how dare this guy say this thing? Well, how dare you not stand up for the kingdom? How dare us as a church 
You know why we have problems? It's because of the church not doing anything. It's time for the church to rise up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Excuse my enthusiasm, but I'm not embarrassed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's the power of God unto salvation. Yes, Jesus. The power of God. It'll break the devil's curse. That's who we're fighting here today. It's not Republicans. It's not Democrat. It's a satanic spirit that has entered into our country that wants to steal it, kill it, and destroy it. Do you hear me today? I said, do you hear me today? Hallelujah. For the time has come, saith the Lord, that my church would stand up. I want to bless you. I want to pour out my blessings. You're going to have to let me, says the Lord. And if you let me, I will pour out blessings upon blessings and nothing shall be able to harm you or stop you, says the Lord of hosts. Woo! I said, woo! I said, woo! I said, woo! Huh? We're afraid to speak in tongues in front of people anymore. Oh my God, we might scare you away. Well, the Lord wants you to know the world's looking for the supernatural. They're looking for the power of God. They're looking for the power. Did you ever look at all the TV programs today? I actually enjoy them. Gifted and all those, they all have power. They all have powers. Do you know that? <laughs> I'll tell you what. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Sumeria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. It's going to take more than a little experiential sermon to get you to go in this way. It's going to take the power of God, Danny, to get rid of the demons that trouble you. It's going to be the power of God that will deliver you. It's going to be the power of God. I remember when I got saved. I'll never forget it. I was on drugs. I had even drugs on me that night. I came to that place. I said, well, maybe I'll get high here too and have a new experience. But God had another, another option for me. I got down there and I started to see the power of God working through people. The man of God started to read people's messages and read people's life like it was nothing. All of a sudden the power, they had an altar call and something happened to me. Something happened to me. That old man was struggling. That old man was saying, don't go up. Don't go up. Don't go up. And I said, no, 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 no. I see something I've never seen before. I see the power of God revealed in this place. And I got up out of my seat and I walked like this, like it was a robot, because something in me was paddled, just making me go, man, do you feel the anointing in this place here today? And it just one step after another. And I came to the altar. And a new person was made. What I'm telling you will supersede where you have been. It'll take you where you need to be. Yes. 